Hello music fans, you're watching Death by Unicorn, the channel where I talk about metal rock and prog music, and today I'm going to talk about five new albums that came out on September 13th, 2024, and I'll talk about them in my order of preference and give my first impressions on them, starting with Oceans of Slumber and their album Where Gods Fear to Speak. This is the sixth album by this American band, and it's progressive doom metal with some melodic death metal, black metal, gothic rock, even some southern metal, even some like country gospel and pop influences thrown in there. This one I'm going to put in my excellent tier. There's really strong female vocals here from Cami, and on this album now she's started doing harsh vocals. I believe it's her first time doing harsh vocals in addition to clean vocals. While previous Oceans of Slumber albums also had harsh vocals, I believe those were previously done by other members of the band, and Cami just did the clean vocals. Now, I love their 2020 self-titled album, and I, uh, the two before that as well. I also enjoy their latest album from 2022, uh, Starlight and Ash, but I found Starlight and Ash was a bit of a step down from their self-titled album. It lacks some of the heaviness that I wanted to hear from them. But from the singles from this one, I knew where God's Fear to Speak would see them return to heavier sounds, and I was excited for that. And upon listening to the full album, it's excellent as I expected. On first listen, I don't think I like it as much as their self-titled album from 2020, but I think it's a strong contender be my second favorite album by uh, by Oceans of Slumber. Uh, though it's pretty close with Winter and The Banished Heart. The clean vocals on here are just amazing. The harsh vocals can be a little bit hit or miss, uh, but I like that they're there to provide some aggression and intensity. A lot of the music is very slow and doomy and sad sounding, but it's also beautiful and then they hit you with those blasts of aggression and intensity with just the right balance between the soft and heavy. Next up, I want to talk about Calandra and their album, A Frame of Mind. This is the third album by this Norwegian band, and it's art rock with pop, Nordic folk, ambient, Celtic, New Age, all mixed in there, maybe a bit of post-rock. And... For this one, I heard the single Are You Ready ahead of time. I really enjoyed that, so that's what made me put it on my list to listen to. There's amazing female vocals on this album as well by Katrine Stenbeck. And I really like this unique blend of Nordic folk with Celtic and New Age music with these pop vocal hooks over this heavy rock, sometimes almost metal music at times. Some parts or have some crunch to them. Some parts are very peaceful, atmospheric and ambient and slow and more like keyboard and piano influenced and remind me of post-rock music. But in general, it's just very beautiful music with beautiful vocals. I think my younger self, if I was, as a teenager, I wouldn't have liked this because it's too soft. It's all like, beautiful clean singing the whole time a very kind of slow and beautiful and i didn't really like celtic music vibes when i was younger but now i can appreciate that and it just sounds really good and i really enjoyed listening to it so if that sounds appealing to you check out calandra and a frame of mind i'm not sure exactly where to put this if it's it's like right on the border between very good and excellent i'm feeling just from talking about it, just to put it in excellent, because I like to be generous with my ratings, but I still need to listen to it more to decide if it fits in very good or in excellent. Now, the next two I'm going to talk about are going to be my very good tier, uh, rather than excellent. They didn't quite cross that threshold. Uh, first up is Marson with his album Dragon and Harmony. It's a debut album by this Polish guitar virtuoso. It's mostly instrumental here, kind of acoustic rock, some prog rock and metal influences on here. 
for this one, I heard the single Classical Dragon ahead of time, and that features Tim Henson of Polyphia fame. Uh, so I really enjoyed that single, and I put this album on my list to check out. Another great song is called I Killed It, another great instrumental guitar shred song with nice clean guitar played in classical style, but also with a lot of that Tim Henson influence and in how he uses the harmonics. When the Light Glows, when the Light Goes, uh, features Portugal the Man, so actually has vocals. So this album isn't fully instrumental. There are few songs with vocals. Um, and he does shred acoustic guitar covers of Justin Timberlake's Crimea River, Nirvana's Heart Shaped Box, and Sade's uh, Smooth Operator. So those are interesting to hear. Uh, Allergies features Delaney Bailey providing great, great female vocals on that one. And all in all, it's just an excellent display of technical virtuosity from Marson in this mostly instrumental album. It's a bit of a novelty album, though, with the three covers, songs, and pulling in random guest features. So the album doesn't really have a cohesive flow or meaning or statement to it, but it's just fun, great guitar playing. Uh, so if you want to hear that and you like bands like Polyphia, check out Marson and Dragon and Harmony. Next up, also my very good tier, is Motorpsycho with their album Nay the 28th album by this Norwegian band. There's psychedelic rock. This has some indie alternative, a little bit of progressive and hard rock influence in there. Um, they're a very prolific band. They rival King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizards output, um, but they've been going since their first album in 1991, so they don't release quite as fast as King Giz. I thought... Motorcycle's last album, Yay, was very good, but it was a little simple, and I really thought their previous album, Ancient Astronauts from 2022, was just excellent, and that's my favorite that I've heard from them. I haven't heard all their stuff yet. Um, Kingdom of Oblivion from 2021 was also very good. I Maybe I'll do a deep dive on them at some point. Um, but definitely check this album out if you're a fan of King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. But like with them, this band is a shapeshifter, so you don't really know what you're going to get. Uh, the early single I heard, Psycho Lab, was okay, just not as adventurous as I was hoping. Uh, and then luckily, several other tracks on the album are, are better for me. On first listen, I enjoyed This Is Your Captain the most. and But this whole album is very pleasant. A lot of nice songs on here. But I wish it either got like a little faster, maybe a little heavier, or just more adventurous on some of them. Like I know they're capable of uh, from hearing Ancient Astronauts. But I think if you like the album Yay and you like Kingdom of Oblivion, you should like this. It's pretty much on par with those, perhaps a little better for me. So I'm going to put it in my very good tier. It just needs something more special on it to elevate it to excellent, and it didn't quite get there. And lastly, I want to mention Tony Levin and his album, Bringing It Down to the Bass, the eighth album by this American bass player, mostly instrumental as well, kind of like the Marson album, but there are some tracks with vocals, it's kind of jazz fusion, it's got progressive rock influence, also some blues on here. And yeah, it's his eighth solo album, but it's probably the hundredth album or something like that if you count everything that Tony Levin's played on in various bands. He's been in King Crimson, of course, and Liquid Attention Experiment. He's played on albums by Peter Gabriel, Stephen Wilson. He's played on Momentary Lapse of Reason by Pink Floyd. He's played on the album Union by Yes, among many others. Also playing on albums with John Lennon, Yoko Ono, and even Sarah McLachlan. And... I heard the early single, the, the title track, bringing it down to the bass. It's a cool, jazzy, instrumental song with amazing bass work. And just as I was hoping, I was hoping there would be some vocals on the album instead of all instrumental, and that ended up being the case. Uh, he got some guest vocalists, different vocalists on different tracks. Uh, generally, though, I wasn't that impressed overall with the vocals, especially on uh, Give the cello some um 
I think the uh, the lyrics and the vocal delivery on that were a bit cringeworthy. Um, in general, it does, it seems like it's not really a lyrics kind of album, or the lyrics are all meta, kind of like singing about what the song sounds like. So, or like your experience of listening to the album, uh, for example, side B slash turn it over. It had some cool acapella vocals. Um, they were they were nice, but they were also a bit weird lyrically, just like talking about turning the album over and starting side B. Um, but they sounded nice at least. And then on the drums is another acapella vocal where he sings just a bunch of drummer names, which is kind of fun and silly. And I found it enjoyable just to hear a lot of uh, the names of great drummers that I, I like. And sometimes he's singing their names kind of like rhythmically and in interesting rhythmic patterns. And sometimes he has nice harmonies. But it's a bit strange and random to just uh, sing a bunch of drummer names. Uh, but yeah, some people might like it. This album reminds me of an album from earlier this year by a band called Trifecta called The New Normal. It's similar in that they're both mostly instrumental jazz fusion with prog rock influences. And just they both have a lot of amazing players on it, but also both have a lot of weird lyrics and vocals that make it kind of awkward to listen to. Um, yeah, this album has great... Uh, guest musicians oh i should have written down who they all were um it's it's a start uh, robert fripp is on it mike portnoy a lot of great players so the playing on this album is amazing i'm just going to put it in my good tier because that's like an album listening experience it's a little weird and yeah i'm just not sure how i feel about it yeah if you want to hear 2011's amazing bass playing though you can't go wrong. He's always a great performer on everything he does. Uh, so check it out. That's Tony Levin bringing it down to the base in my good tier. And that's all that I have for today, uh, the five albums that I checked out on September 13th. Let me know what you think of these albums down in the comments. Is there anything else that came out recently that you think I'll enjoy? Also let me know. And stay tuned for next time. Peace out.